Hey YouTube, it's Tom again. I got another video for you. This one is about flipping cars. Uh, obviously, I am a used car dealer. I'm licensed. I do buy here, pay here financing in Fate, Texas, which is just east of Dallas on I-30. Uh, my website is buxtonauto.com. I don't inflate prices because you're at a buy here, pay here dealer. My prices are generally in line with what other vehicles are listed for, say on Craigslist or Marketplace. The difference is I get a good down payment and I finance the balance for six months and you get zero interest charges while you're paying that car off. It's not to beat you down. It's not to make a bunch of money on interest. For me, it just helps me sell my cars more quickly and move on to the next one. That's what we do here at Buxton Auto. Uh, requirements for financing our vehicles, four things. One is a picture ID. Uh, from a government agency. Two is a cash down payment. Three is a proof of income. I don't do a debt to income ratio, but I do want to know that you make some money and you can afford your car payment. And the fourth thing is a proof of residence. You know, I don't know you, you don't know me, we just met, you're leaving with my car. So I need a proof of residence. If you have those four things, you will leave Buxton Auto with a car. Um, and it's not uh, you come in for one and we try to you know jump you to a more expensive one or you come in wanting the more expensive one and I only want to say the cheap one that's not it whatever the down payment is if you have that down payment and you have those four items you're good to go with that car but enough of that before I was a dealer I did a lot of how uh, car flipping uh, from my driveway which you're not supposed to do but you know like so many others I did it um, I've been looking at a lot of videos about uh, how to flip cars on YouTube, like that's a, a big thing. And I think it is. And there's also some Facebook groups. But I'm going to give you the one tip that will change your profit exponentially. It's one of those things that I learned it years ago. When I first started flipping cars, uh, I was honestly, I was flipping little Volkswagen Bugs. And then I progressed to Volvos, which I love Volvos and we still sell Volvos. And then we did BMWs. But as I got my dealer license, we found out that uh, the everyman likes things like Cobalts, Impalas, Tahoes, Trailblazers, uh, more affordable type cars. But anyway, I followed a couple folks and seen their videos and they talk about how to negotiate, which is crucial, obviously, to making money. If you wait to the end of the video, I'm going to tell you the best way to get a good deal on a car. Um, obviously, have cash when you're ready to go look. Don't go look till there's cash in your hand, okay? Uh, those are all simple things. You know, telling somebody you'll come back next week if they still have it and give them half what they want, that's not going to work. Um, I've also picked up a few keys in negotiating. Um, I generally take the soft side. I don't tell people that their car is a piece of shit. Um, I may point out some things that they already know. I may tell them it's a tough situation if this or that has gone bad on their car and it's really going to hurt the value. But it's not about beating people up. Uh, my favorite question that I always ask is, what were you really hoping to get on it? Because if they've listed their car, they listed it for a price and they know they're going to get beat down on. So. When I say, what were you hoping to get on it? That's a soft number. That's a hope, a wish. That's not, and I will not sell this car for less than $2,000. It's a hope. So what were you hoping to get on this car? The next one is, well, I'd be a buyer at whatever the number, $1,000. I wish I could give you more, I just can't. You can probably get more if you wanna wait, um, but if a thousand dollars today looks better than dealing with all us knuckleheads coming to look, maybe you should take it. And sometimes they do. That's why you're there and you're talking to people. Don't be a weenie over marketplace and send the, you know, if their car is $1,500, don't send them the message that says 800 today because you get plenty of people that are not serious buyers that are just poking on their little phones and they want to have some activity. And, uh, you know, it's a waste of time. It pisses people off. But anyway, where do you go to flip a car? If you're going to buy a car that you're going to flip, let's say you are not a licensed dealer. Although at the end, I'll tell you how I do it. And I am a licensed dealer. Where are you going to go? So obviously everybody thinks that dealers get all the best deals and you get into the dealer auction. I got a buddy at the dealer auction, blah, blah. Okay. Yeah, fine. Forget that. Let's talk about the average guy. 
People will tell you, oh, you can get a lot of money if you go to the auction, you go to the impound auction. I have had some home runs on impound auctions. I'm lucky we're in the DFW uh, Metroplex. There are auctions every day. There's online auctions every day. There's live auctions every day. You can buy cars from the impound every day of the week in the Metroplex, not a problem. Let me tell you what to be aware of. One, they're all untested. Every once in a blue moon does a good impound yard cut keys and let you know if it runs or doesn't run and let you hear it run. Nine times out of 10, it is, there's the car, bid. And you have to decide by checking the radiator and the oil and looking underneath it, is it gonna run or did it get impounded because it shit out? And where's it at? The next thing is you may not know the mileage because now odometers are digital. And if there's no power to the car, it may not show the mileage. If you put your own jump box on it, not all odometers light up until you turn the key on. So it could be a 100,000 mile car, it could be a 300,000 mile car. I'm gonna show you one trick that I use when I'm looking at the impounds on how to get a good guesstimation of what the mileage is. This only works in Texas on cars that were previously registered in Texas. The website is mytxcar.org. What this is, is a public database for our safety inspections. You can see the last time the car was inspected, what the mileage was on the car, and get an idea from there where the mileage might be today. Funny thing, if a car hasn't been registered in three or four years, that could be good, as in it didn't get a lot of miles on it, or it could be terrible because it shit out and nobody registered it or got it inspected. So the link will be down below, mytxcar.org. Any car in Texas that has been inspected before will have a record there. That'll give you an idea when you're looking at the impound about how many cars, uh, how many miles that car might have. The next thing I always look at is out of state cars at the impound. I have found that my luck is better or at least as good with out of state cars actually running. They get impounded, maybe the owner lives out of state, maybe they brought the car here, sold it, they can't find the person with the title, so it goes away. So those have been decent cars. But again, no way to check the mileage on those. So if you buy at the impound, it's gonna be relatively cheap and it's going to be a huge crapshoot. If you absolutely need to take your $500 or $1,000 or whatever you're starting your car flipping with and you need to be sure you're going to make some money, do not go to the impound. Buy it off the market. Now, this is where it's going to get good, guys. So you can, you can cruise Craigslist every day. You know, you can set the parameters for the price. You can set the parameters for distance from you. Facebook the same way. I try to buy the cars that somebody else is afraid of. I'm lucky here at Buxton, I also own a shop on the same property. So I buy a lot of needs work cars, um, blown head gaskets, bad transmissions, uh, no start, they don't know why. Because already if it's a car that needs substantial work, people are afraid of it. You're not competing with everybody that wants a used car in that price range. You're competing with people that want a car in that price range that are not afraid to make the repairs or take the gamble, know how to fix it, or are not spending all the money they have on that $1,000 car. So I look for cars that need work. The next thing I look for on a regular basis, and I did a video on this previously, I'll put the uh, link in it down below as well, is how to do a bonded title. I buy I don't know, 30% of my inventory is no title cars that I bought and got a bond for. The video will show you everything you need to do. The bond is not a big deal. You do it in the daytime when you can call law enforcement or you can call the transportation department or now it's the Texas DMV and verify the car's not stolen. You get a bill of sale from the person and you're good. Um, how many people will buy no title cars? That scares the shit out of people. So if you're comfortable doing it and you've learned the process for a bonded title, that is an avenue to look at. Margins are 
huge. My last point, my best point ever, the thing I learned 25, yeah, 25 probably years ago, and it was a joke. Back in the day, there were these infomercials. One knucklehead told me that placing tiny classified ads will make you rich. Another knucklehead said, if you just think a little bit differently, you'll become rich. So when you're looking through Facebook, you're looking through Craigslist, you're looking through OfferUp, all these sites, you're looking for a car to buy in a certain price range that you can make money on. So are however many other knuckleheads that want to do the same thing or are just poor and broke and want a car. So the person selling the car has people interested or at least talking to them. The person selling the car has already made a mental decision they're going to sell the car and they have picked a price in their head because they listed that car for sale. And maybe they've done a little bit of show in terms of they've washed it or they've armor all the tires or whatever in preparation for the sale. So they are sellers. They are in that mindset. So here's what you do. And if you live in the Dallas market and you see my ads and you want to do the same thing, I'm going to be a little frustrated, but I figure there's enough out there for all of us. Don't look at those customers. I mean, yeah, look, but that's not where the cars from, come from. You want the guy that isn't prepared to sell, the guy that hasn't thought about what his car is worth. Here's what you do. Find the same kind of car or two that you're comfortable with and you put an ad on Craigslist. I buy Chevy Impalas or Chevy Impala Wanted. And in the body of your ad, you put, I can pay up to $2,000, up to $1,500, whatever. I can handle mechanical work. I can handle lost titles. I can handle body work. Whatever your, your forte is, the cars that you look for, you put that ad. And in a day or two, you rephrase it and run it again. And in a day or two, you rephrase it and run it again. Change up your pictures in the wanted section of Craigslist or in your Facebook groups, not on Marketplace. Those people are buyers and sellers. In the group, you put a message that says, does anyone have a car they'd like to sell that needs some work? I'm looking for one. I can pay $1,000. Please let me know if you have one. And put, I can do body work, I can do paint, I can do uh, mechanical, I can deal with title issues. Guys, these people had not thought of selling that hoopty or had no idea they could sell their car without a title until they read your ad. And once they read your ad, you are the only one they're talking to about the car. They don't have other buyers coming by. They don't have people messaging them. They didn't clean the car out. It's still sitting dead beside the house or the engine's knocking when they start it, but you are the only one talking to the people. So when you show up, you be polite, you have your cash in hand, you look the car over and you tell them, what were you hoping to get on it? And if that number works for you, take it. If it doesn't, say, oh gosh, I'm sorry. That's more than I would be able to do based on what I'm gonna to have to do to fix it. If you could take X, I can take it off your hands right now. And then you pull out the money and I brought the cash with me, okay? Nobody wants a check. Nobody wants, I'll be back tomorrow. Here's the cash. Do you think we have a deal? Oh no, I couldn't possibly take, you know, blah, blah, blah. Count it out right in front of them. I know it's less than you want, but can we make this work? This is really all I have to work with. It's not all you have, you're not lying. It's all you have to work with because you're gonna make some other money when you spend some other money when you're doing the rest of the stuff, like fixing the car. Then, don't be a dick. Don't have an open title. Just knuckle down and factor in the 6% cost of, reg of transferring the title. In Texas, it's $33 plus six and a quarter percent of the purchase price. 
You can lie about the purchase price all you want. Texas uses what they call a presumptive value. The presumptive value is the average price of cars with that VIN number registered in the state. Don't get license plates. That's another hundred bucks. So do that. Take it to your county immediately. Do a title transfer only. By the time you're done with that car and you've got it fixed, the title is back in your name. That means no buyer will be afraid of it because it's not an open title. It's in your name. You can sign whatever is necessary to get it done. So that's your tip. That is the biggest tip for making money flipping cars, either for dealers that are doing buy here, pay here with cheap cars, or with individuals that are buying cars for the sole purpose of fixing them and selling them. Okay, I hope this is useful to you. I'll put some links down below. If you got a minute, take your right hand there, that mouse hand, scroll it up to that like and subscribe button. Guys, I appreciate you watching. Y'all have a great one. And my remote quit working. This is what happens when the remotes come from the same place that brings you Corona. And I don't mean Corona beer. I mean coronavirus. See this crap? Anyway, thanks guys.